Hi, my name is Kevin. I'm a master's student in digital experience design of Hyper Island Manchester. Today, I'm going to share about synthesizing research by using a 2x2 two two matrix. But first, let's talk about why synthesizing research is such a crucial part of the design process. In this modernized world, we see more and more a quality of product or service is measured by user end satisfaction. We are increasingly expecting our products and services to obtain a higher quality of life. And because of that, Designs have to be more human-centered to stay competitive in the markets today. A human-centered approach is a way of understanding users and their experiences as a core problem. And one of the essential parts of a human-centered approach is research. Because research lets designers and researchers make personal connections with users and their experiences. And by doing this, designers and researchers will gain empathy and share understanding with the users and their experiences without bias. But do you know that a harder part in design research is to synthesize it? Synthesizing is hard because it is not just simply translating the data we got from our users into insights. Synthesizing requires us to put an extra layer of analysis of personal interpretation of the data. But as a reward, this process of making sense of the data will enable us to get insights, which then can be turned into opportunities and ideas. And this is the reason why it is so important for us to be able to synthesize research well. It is a framework we use to help synthesize our research and get clarity out of it, like having one opposing characteristics on a horizontal axis and a different one on a vertical axis. The characteristics can be based on any kind of classifications. It could be bad versus good, cheap versus expensive, fragile versus durable, or anything that is related to what we are looking for. Here's an example to make it clear. We can start by drawing a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. If we are looking at people's behavior in beach watching, we might have a bad versus good quality of content on the horizontal axis, and low versus high complexity of the content on the vertical axis. Now, let's name each sector in this framework. You don't always have to name it, but I like to name it for clarity purposes, so that it's easier for me to refer back to it. Let's name the type of content with high quality and high complexity as safety. Content with high quality and low complexity as light. Content with bad quality and low complexity as filler with potential and content with low quality and high complexity as bad filler. Next step. We sort our data by placing it where they belong in a framework according to the characteristics that we chose earlier. Our data can be anything like people, motivations, quotes, objects, or basically anything that is worth exploring. For example, we categorize quotes we got from our interviews. If we have a person A saying, 
I can binge watch Game of Thrones because I will forget what happened in the previous episode. We put it at the sacred area. Then, if you have a person B saying, I like to binge watch The Simpsons when I got back home after work because it is relaxing and I don't have to think too much. We put it at a light area. And so on. You get the idea. By sorting them out, we should be able to discover patterns that can lead us to insights, which can be turned into opportunities and ideas for us to solve the problem that we are facing. For example, if we have a person A saying, I can binge watch Game of Thrones because I will forget what happened in the previous episode, and person C saying, I have a sacred Monday where I spend three hours in the morning to watch my favorite shows. And person E saying, every time I watch my favorite show, I have to stop before the cliffhanger to avoid binge watching. Now, we should be able to see a pattern in these three quotes. People don't like to binge watch their sacred content. And from this, we can form an insight that says, by binge watching their sacred content, people will end up lost in their stories because there is not enough reflection time. This would be our key insight, one of our key insights. But we shouldn't stop here. If we can see more patterns in a framework, we should continue doing this. We should continue to look for more patterns and form insights out of it. Because the more insights that we get, the better. But there will be times where we couldn't find a clear pattern on our first trial. Don't worry. Try again with different characteristics. You might need to try different combinations of characteristics before you are able to see the clear pattern. Just give it a try, even when you are not sure about it. Trust the process, because each try will lead you to a clearer path. And all of this is just one way of synthesizing research. There are many more tools out there provided by design companies like IDEO that you can use. Few examples are find themes, create insight statements, explore your hunch, how might we, journey map, relational map, and many more. There are no bad or good tools out there. Try as many tools as you can to find out what works for you and what don't. And I hope. At the end of this video, you will have a clearer understanding of synthesizing design research by using a 2x2 matrix. Thank you.